Benson here from Essential Nails. I'm at home in my little workspace, my nail space. I've been doing some demonstration videos of some Halloween nail art. Ooh, I love Halloween. You can be so adventurous and out there with the nail art ideas. I've been really quite poorly and I didn't even have a voice all week so I'm just in recovery so I'm a bit croaky. You have to excuse the voicing over. It's not the best. I hope that these nail art ideas help you. Um, we've used mixed media, so for those of you who are just starting out, be brave, give it a go. There's some more complicated things for the more advanced and adventurous. But I do hope that if you get up to your own nail art designs and that you've done your own Halloween nails, please post them on our Facebook page and show us how you've got on. So, this is the first little design. Now, the way I've edited these, um, this first one is just a little bit of painting, but you'll need to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see the next few consecutive little designs that we've done for Halloween. So, this first bit of the video, you can see we've sped it up because by this point, everybody should know how to gel polish already. I've used the Gelays Grey Exec, first coat and cure, second coat and then cure. And I've used the No Wipe Top Coat, and I'm curing that again now. So with a very soft buffer, I'm now buffing the clear top coat because we've sealed the collar in. You don't want to be buffing the collar back off. I've just prepped the surface for painting. I've got black, white and silver paint. And my striping brush, I've thinned it out. Don't be afraid of snipping a few bristles out to make it thinner. I have two of them. I've kept one quite fat and chunky. And this other one is sort of like half the width that it was originally. I've done with the grey exec because actually some of the silver paint and the black doesn't show up quite as well. If I'd used the smoke, it would um, be a little bit too dark for the painting. This is only a very delicate little bit of painting that I would probably do on one nail if I was doing somebody quite a plain set of nails. So as you can see, when you place the brush on the nail, the way that the brush flows, the bristles continue to follow in the line of the paint. It makes it easier using a long brush to get quite straight lines. But there's a very fine balance with watering your paint down to make it watery enough that it will flow nicely from the bristles of the brush but not be too watery that you don't have solid colour. I have a very, very, very thin skinny brush here with literally only a few bristles in it for very fine detail. Again, if you've got an old brush that you prefer to use but you think it's a bit chunky, snip a few bristles out of it and just keep playing and practicing until you're happy with the desired effect that it gives you when you're painting. So I have, sp I have sped some of this up. We'll be here all day, obviously sitting and watching the painting is the boring bit. Spider and his web, his little body and his head as he's hanging upside down. I'm doing the design predominantly just in black now, black shadow, because I'm going to go and add highlighting afterwards with the other colours of paint. This little guy's dead cute. He's really, really small, but my brush is very, very fine. You don't usually ever find brushes quite this skinny on the market, so you you will have to um, doctor one yourself, really. If you've got an old one that you're about to throw away, have a practice with that one, snipping the bristles out and seeing how thin you can get it. I 
I'm sorry, to get it so close it is difficult to keep it in focus all the time. There's his little legs. So with the same really skinny brush, I've picked up a small amount of white. You can see here that the areas that I'm highlighting, they can look a little bit harsh um, and too contrasting to the picture. But later on, I'm going to wash over these again with silver. Silver shows up better over white than it does over black. So it's almost like you're just laying a base down to make the colour pop out a bit later. It's difficult to recreate the effect that you get on a spider's web early in the morning, like when it's dewy and the light's shining off it. So I've found it's best to just mix some colours. So here I've got some quite watered down silver. You could see I've just put like a little wash over the spider's body. And to give it depth and texture, I've highlighted some in white and some in silver. And you should just keep practising and playing with this and adding little detail and touching it up until you're happy with it. When you top coat your design, it does diffuse the light a little bit and the lines that you've painted, it does soften them. So whilst you might not be happy with some elements of your painting, give it a chance because by the time you've top coated it, it could look very different. So I've just added some silver to his legs to try and make them shine. You can see as I'm moving it here in the light, you can see how the silver just picks up the light a little bit. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse my throat. Um, the velvet top coat is possibly one of my favourite things at the moment. When your painting is totally dry, you're going to top coat with this velvet top coat. Now, it's full of particles, which make the brush really thick. It can be quite difficult to paint with because it's, it's a big chunky brush. So be very careful with it. You don't want to go over onto the skin or the cuticle. Put a good coat on. Cure this in the lamp. Follow your manufacturer's instructions, obviously, for lamp and curing time for gel polishes. You can see where it's shiny, where I've not wiped it off yet. The, the light shines off the surface of a shiny nail. And it makes it harder to see the paintwork underneath. Well, this is why I love this velvet, because it's matte. You see more of the painting without the glare from the surface. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll come back again and see what we're getting up to next week. Bye.